Okay, let's look at the descriptive statistics. This is actually a very, very important section because you're gonna use a lot of what is in this section for the rest of the course. So we are looking at measures of location. We're gonna look at quartiles, percentiles, are you in the top 10 percentile, all that kind of good stuff, and then Z-scores. So quartiles, quarters, Okay, so if you think about 25%, 25% is how you would talk about the location of a data value. You know, um, again, this could be grades. Are you in the top percent, percentile? Are you in the top quartile? Okay, in the top 25%, the bottom, and so on. Um, we use these when you're asked to find the five number summary, as you're going to see on my videos for the Google Sheets that this is very quick and easy to find, but it's important that you understand the five number summary is the minimum and the maximum, and then the first, second, and third quartile. The second quartile, if we go back here, so if we're right here, we're at 50%, that's the same thing as the median, so that's important to know. All right, um, can look at outliers you know depending our on if you're way above and they give an actual formula here 1.5 times this inner quartile range okay and it says found by subtracting the first quartile from the third so q3 minus q1 um, box plots are are very nice to be able to see your data if you notice the box here okay so the actual box is showing from Q3 to Q1, which again is IQR. And anything outside of the box, okay, they call this typically a, a, a box and whisker plot, they call these the whiskers, then would go up to your maximum value and your minimum value. These are kind of nice because this median line can move around inside of the box and show you, you know, in this case, it looks like half half of the data right is mainly above you know a higher area this i don't know probably what about almost nine and above so th these are kind of nice to be able to see visually what's going on um, you won't have to construct a box plot manually but you will be given problems where um, you will have to be able to look and see that this is the correct box plot so again you know, kind of the big things to find is the max, the min, and the median value. All right, percentiles are the same thing as quartiles, but instead of 25, 25, 25, 25, you could have different percentiles. So that's the only difference, okay? So it talks about how do you calculate a particular percentile. Again, I show you how to do this in the Google Sheets, probably not. I mean, it's, it's important because you like to know if you're in the top percentile or if something is in the 42nd percentile, but the most important part of this module two is going to be the later stuff in here. So let's get through your percentile. This, measures of center. The mean, median, mode, and mid-range. This is where the data is kind of centered around. You already know some of these values okay the mean probably just doesn't sound like you know it but it's an average okay so that's all that is um, there's going to be some different notation in here so we will talk about you know once we kind of go through here the different notation um, the mean as i mentioned is just the average so x bar is the sample mean you have a sample of values you sum that e means you sum them all up and divide by the number of values the mu, the Greek population mean, same thing. Sum all the values, divide by the number of population. So little n is sample mean, big n is population mean. These are things that I probably would write down, okay, because there's going to be so many different symbols here. Um, the only issue with the mean is if you have, think about if I had grades and I had everybody in the class made 100 and one person made a zero. We don't like that. But that would skew the average, and so it's very sensitive to outliers, so that's all this means. Um, a lot of times the median is what's reported because it's not affected by outliers, so it's still just that, just that middle value. 
Um, usually students have issues, and again, we're going to use Google Sheets, but if you do this manually, they forget to put them in order, and then it's the actual middle value. If there's not an exact middle value, okay, meaning there's an even number of values, you take the two middle values and you just average them. The mode, the value that shows up the most, um, maybe we're looking at which movie people went to the most last summer, you know, something like that. So that's all the mode is. Um, you can have more than one mode. You cannot have a mode, meaning nothing was repeated. The mid-range, the midpoint, so you take the max plus the minimum divided by two. Um, definitely, probably not something huge that, in fact, I don't normally see it reported very often. Usually you see the mean and the median reported. And they give you some examples, of course, here to go through. So that was measures of center, right? The mean, median, the mode, and the mid-range. Measures of variation is how your data is varying. Um, I always use the best example of this is you're filling water. A, a machine is filling water bottles, 12-ounce water bottles. And you want all of them to be 12 ounces of water, right? Well, that's not going to happen because it's measuring and there could be some you know, a little less than, you can't be over thin, right? Because you overfilled the bottles. But this is important because this talks about consistency. Okay, so if you have a large variation, a large spread of your data, there might be something going wrong. It may, it may not, right? Um, I think a grades can have a large spread because we can have zeros and we can have hundreds and a lot of people kind of in the middle. The range, you take the max minus the min. Standard deviation, um, you know, it's kind of nice to understand this formula, but you're going, you know, to once again use Google Sheets. The standard deviation is how far away you are from the mean. Remember, X bar is the sample mean. Each data value, how far away you are from the mean, we square it, sum it, remember what little n is? sample size and then we take the square root again we're going to use google sheets but i think it's important to understand this formula because when i say it's how far you are above or below average that's this piece right here the x minus the x bar um, you know just simply talks about this will always be positive because you can't take a square root of a negative number and certainly if you have a lot of outliers you're going to have a bigger spread Okay, so that's the standard deviation. It's kind of nice to go through a standard deviation, you know, um, with a small amount of data to see how to actually work it, but we're certainly going to use Google Sheets. The variance, um, a lot of students will say, well, why do we need the variance if we have the standard deviation? Usually you don't. It's just this is in squared units, and sometimes you need the variance versus the standard deviation. Um, not really sure why that didn't show up right there. <laughs> so this would be sigma, okay, the population standard deviation, and sigma squared, the population variance, and then we have the sample standard deviation and the sample variance. I was going to see if it would let me write, but it doesn't seem to want to let me write. That's okay. All right, um, unbiased here is because the sample variance is unbiased because, because we're looking at our population variance, once again, our spread. Okay, so usually the sample is going to have a larger spread, okay, than our population because our population is what we're actually interested in. And then they go through some examples of how to find it. Z-scores so important. You're going to use these the rest of the course. All a z-score is is the number of standard deviations you are from a standardized mean of zero and a, and a standard deviation of one. So pretty much what we're doing is we are just standardizing our data as you're going to see later so you can look up probabilities in one table. That's all a z-score is. A standard deviation, so it's the number of standard deviation. Um, if it's positive, then it's above the mean. If it's negative, then it's below the mean. Um, it does say here to round z-scores to two decimal places. That's only because when we look at tables and not use something like Google Sheets, 
they actually round to two decimal places. Um, anything unusual would be more or less than two standard deviations. That's all this is stating here. And so we like things to be within two standard deviations of the mean. Remember I said the mean is going to be standardized to zero. So if we're within this minus or plus two standard deviations, we don't see a problem. If we're below or above, we're overfilling water bottles or we're underfilling water bottles. And that's all that this means here. Um, some more examples of how to use z-scores. And like I said, you, you need to understand how to do these um, because you're going to use them to find probabilities based on these standardized values.